Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFosse from Trenton, Ontario, and this is Dalen Zarman from Columbus, Ohio. In this next segment, we're going to be talking about steering column relocation and generally creating space and movement of the dash using many different tools and techniques. Dalen? So what we're going to do is we're going to first evaluate what is impinging on the victim. Uh, if it's steering ring impingement, then we're just going to relocate the steering column. We're going to accomplish that by bringing in a spreader, relocating the steering ring so the large opening of the ring is exposed and facing the A pillar. It's important that the B pillar is removed for this technique because the spreader needs to be as parallel with the car as possible. So the spreader is going to come in, tips are going to open up, the right tip is going to place in the ring, the left tip is going to place on the exterior of the A pillar, and then we're going to bump throttle. You don't want a, a rapid succession movement on the throttle control for the tool. You just want to jog the tool along and gently draw the steering column up towards the A pillar. That will hopefully gain you the access you need to remove the victim from under the ring. If in fact we identify that there's also dash intrusion on the patient's extremities, we've covered spreader movements to the structural members in the dash in previous segments. In this segment, we want to discuss using a ram. So we're going to use a small ram. The benchmark for locating the base of the ram is here on the rocker panel. And right where the cross member comes under the seats and ties into the rocker, that's where your primary support is. Important note with EVs. We want to make sure that we're evaluating that rocker position and floor pan position throughout this movement. The rocker panels on modern EVs are also incredibly hardened, very similar to the A pillar, the bulkhead, and the B pillar. But if you start to deflect the rocker, stop on the movement, that's going to apply upper pressure or tension to the battery pack, which can induce mechanical or physical abuse to the batteries and cause a thermal event or a short circuit. So you've noticed we've added additional cribbing points underneath our post or the area where we're going to position the base of the ram. We're then going to beam the ram in, and your target is the base of the column where the steering column ties into the dash assembly. Make sure that that traveling tip or the upper tip of the ram locates itself on the left corner of the column. If you're too lateral on the column, it's going to slip on the plastics and travel up the column without moving the dash. And if you're too inset, it's going to slip to the opposite side and travel. So you have to find that right position to be able to penetrate the plastic, grip the column, and pressurize the dash and then drive it up through the windshield. The benefit of these movements, again, are no relief and no working through the A-pillar, especially important if you have a charging port in the A-pillar with high voltage cabling. I'm going to step away and the crew is going to come in and perform these maneuvers. Our rescuers are coming in, hard protection is being added between the victim and the spreader. Right tip is in the ring, left tip is on the A-pillar. You'll notice that the rescuer has to apply some hip leverage to the tool once he gets a grip to make sure that the tool doesn't migrate and he's gonna draw the ring up and away from the victim. And that's all we're looking for. Remember, inches can be what we need to gain access and free up the victim. Go ahead and remove the spreader, and we'll convert now to a RAM application, relocating the entire column and the dash assembly. Prior to RAM location, it's always important with all your tools that the tips have metal contact. So we're gonna remove plastics and we're gonna make sure that our base of our ram is positioned on the weld seam traveling around the opening of the door assembly. That gives us our greatest point of resistance. Once the column is contacted, hands are gonna be removed and put into safe positions, and we're gonna keep eyeballs on that lower rocker. We wanna make sure that we have zero deflection in that rocker assembly. And you can notice that the column is immediately moving and the column will capture the structural members within the dash and then the rest of the dash will relocate. Go ahead and continue to progress. For safety purposes, once that is in position, if you need to maintain that position and then relocate another tool to capture that progress, tools can be locked out, tagged out by simply hitting the power selector or by removing the battery from the battery powered tools. All right, in this past module, what did we talk about? What did we accomplish? We identified patient location and some of the impingements that they were faced with. Tools that we used to try to manipulate these structures was our spreader by redirecting that steering column off of our patient. Next, we then utilized our small compact ram 
locating a safe location on the rocker panel and redirecting that column up and away from the patient. Once again, creating space. Rescue is the game of inches angles in an egress and sometimes all you need is a few inches to get that foot out. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.